Does the First Minister support military intervention in Syria? I received a phone call at midnight on Saturday morning from Downing Street. I received a briefing from the Prime Minister. It was clear what the action was going to be. I made clear to her my concern uh, that uh, I feared that there would be civilian casualties given the complicated mosaic on the ground uh, in Syria. That doesn't seem to have happened, uh, but my concern was made to her at the time. But I, I, I was very concerned that it wouldn't be possible to take any action without civilian casualties, and that was something I wanted to avoid. My party is uh, committed to opposing these tokenistic American-led airstrikes, and I'd like to remind the First Minister that the road to peace is rarely paved with the weapons of war. Now, the effectiveness in terms of stopping Syrian suffering is far from clear. The Prime Minister herself has said that these strikes were not intended to change the course of the war in Syria and end the suf suffering of the Syrian people. Without a single vote cast in this Parliament, Westminster or anywhere else, the First Minister was quick to show his support for those airstrikes. So can he now tell this Assembly, does he believe that Westminster should be able to start wars without any parliamentary approval? Well, it, it's not a war, because uh, that prerogative lies with the monarch. It is military action, that is true. Well, there is a precedent for it. Uh, David Cameron asked for a vote in Parliament, and it's a matter for the, for the current Prime Minister to, to explain as to why there wasn't a vote this time around. There are great dangers here. Syria is complicated. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind there was a chemical attack, uh, and anything that removes the capability of such an attack occurring in the future is something I would support. What I would be extremely sceptical of would be an acceleration uh, or escalation uh, of military action in Syria that would lead, to my mind, inevitably to civilian casualties. And that, of course, would be a propaganda boost for, for those who are uh, countries that are already in Syria and who themselves have uh, a, a, a case to answer for what they're doing. But that risk is there now, isn't it? For me, it's not a question of bombing in Iraq and then bombing in Syria. I don't see much of a difference. Those were the complacent words of the First Minister when the prospect of British bombs being dropped on Syria first arose back in 2015. He supported bombing campaigns in Syria then, and he supports them now. Yesterday, the First Minister's London Labour boss questioned the legality, the morality and the effectiveness of the strikes. Does the First Minister harbour the same concerns or does he stand by his comments in support for the Prime Minister and her airstrikes in the British national interest? Well, well firstly, I have no reason to doubt the, um, the soundness of the legal advice. On the issue of morality, well, we are talking here about a chemical attack that occurred on defenceless civilians. And if an attack means that the capability of repeating that is no longer there, then yes, I would support that. Yes, I would support that. That's not the case. The third point, uh, then, is effectiveness. Well, time will tell. Time will tell. What I would not support is any military action that would put the lives of civilians at risk. That's a propaganda boom to, uh, to other countries, a propaganda boost. But there was a chemical attack by the Assad regime. Of that, I am convinced. Secondly, uh, I believe that these uh, missile launches were designed to reduce or remove the capacity of a chemical attack in the future. That surely must be something that uh, should be welcomed in order to avoid those attacks happening in the future. But in terms of escalation, no, there are great dangers with that.